Hello and welcome. My name is Kevin and here at my channel we learn how to make the web and how to make it look good while we're at it with weekly tips, tricks and tutorials. In this week's video we're going to be looking at how we can uh, make a container here without actually having any markup for a container. Um, we're going to be doing it with grid instead because it lets us cut down on the markup basically. Um, so it works nice and well but I also want to look at the if we do not have support for grids, we're on some older browser that doesn't support it, how our container can still work. So it's a nice simple fallback that we can use if we're using grid on our website to make sure that uh, our content doesn't all of a sudden stretch all the way across the screen. So stick around to find out how we're going to do that. So this was actually something that I wrote about over on my website a while back, um, but it was recommended by Fukundo, who's a common, uh, someone I've interacted a lot with here on YouTube and uh, just through social media since I've started this channel. So he actually recommended I do a five minute Friday. I recorded a five minute Friday for it and realized it was just way too rushed. So instead of that, I've made a bit of a longer video where I can give it some proper justice. So with that out of the way, let's, uh, let's go and see how I did all this. So we are in CodePen as usual. Uh, so that means you can find the finished code uh, in the description below. There's a link to it there if you want to go and check out what this looked like at the end. Um, so here we have a sort of a typical, very basic, but um, sort of a website thing where we have background images and background colors and stuff like that um, that might stretch the whole way across and sort of a very basic but typical um, structure here where you have a, sort of a section of your site. I have my hero, then we have a container inside of it. All of our content goes inside of our container. My main content, a container, and then we have our paragraphs and all of that. Um, so this is sort of the typical layout that you might get, um, structure you might get, and it relies on something like this where we have a container. Um, and my container is has its max width on here and it has a margin auto or zero auto which is holding the content in the middle so as my page grows and shrinks um, it's there but I, have a, I do have a max width on it so if my page gets too small um, it does allow it to shrink down. Um, this is a solution that was required for the longest time. Um, but I'd argue now that we have grid, we don't need the container here. Um, it becomes extra markup that we don't need to write. Um, it does take a little bit of extra setup, a little tiny bit in our CSS, but it's well worth uh, the effort. And we can make a really easy fallback that's going to work exactly like the container, even though the markup isn't there. Uh, so let's go and check out how we can do that. So what I'm actually going to do is come in all of these and delete the container, because as I mentioned, we're not going to need it. And, oops, I only <laughs> hadn't even closed it there. Um, so let's tidy up that HTML. And let's take a look at what I'm going to do. So now we have the problem of our content touching the sides of our screen and just stretching all the way across, which we don't want to do. So the first thing is going to be setting up, um, I'm going to do it first for the hero. Or we can do it for all of them. Let's do it for all of them. Uh, the main content and my uh, footer. And on all of those, we're going to do a display of grid. Um, there we go. So we have the display of grid that at beginning does not change anything. And then what I'm going to do is grid template columns. And on my grid template columns, I'm going to do a min max of 1m 1fr, which is going to sort of replace the auto margin from the left side. I'm going to do actually we'll set three of them up for now, but we're going to change this middle one. I'm just going to do 300 pixels 900. So the 900 is the same um, that we had before. One thing with min max is the minimum value has to be a pixel number. You can't use something like FRs um, as the minimum. It, it does have to be something they can easily calculate. If you don't know about the FR, it's a unit that takes up the available space. So if there is available space, it will grow to take that available space. Um, we'll see a little bit. It's sort of, as I said, going to act as our auto margin on the left and the right in this case. Um, the one thing that does take a little bit of extra setup, you can see that this just broke my entire site and it doesn't work at all. Um, I'm going to go a little, I'm going to do hero, let's actually just copy this selector here. Um, I wouldn't normally do it this way, but I'm just going to star just so we're taking all the content oops, uh, inside. Um, so we set it up like that and then I'm going to do a grid column of 2 over 3. And just like that, we're back to how we were before. And it looks identical to what we had before. Uh, the one advantage, as I mentioned, is we don't need to have the extra markup. 
and we can grow my screen and it maxes out and I shrink and it's shrinking down. Um, because I have this 1M as my minimum, it is acting as my little buffer here on the side. So it won't, it'll prevent the um, things from touching the side. So if I switch that over to a zero, um, you'll see that things actually touch. So you can control this. I would just keep both of these the same. Um, and then it's going to control how much you go off on the sides like that. So that's nice and great, except for if a browser doesn't support grid. If you're one of those people who isn't learning grid just because of browser support, please rethink it because uh, browser support is actually better than you think. And I am going to do a bit of a series on that. Um, and down below, I have linked to a really good CSS uh, tricks article or a series of articles actually that talks um, a little bit about it. So yeah, everything is working nice and dandy here, but we want to create a fallback. So it's actually really easy to create this fallback and I'm going to use at supports for this. So what I'm going to do here is actually, this is called a feature query. So it's at supports and display grid. So if the browser supports grid, it's going to use uh, this code in here. So it's just like a media query, except does, does the browser understand display grid? Yes, it understands display grid. Great, then we're gonna use this. And you can see that because I'm on Firefox here, um, it is working fine. What happens though is if the browser doesn't support it, we get this instead. And that's not quite what we want. We're back to the problem that we had before. Well, this is where the, the magic is and where it's really cool. So before I actually write this, I just wanna say I found this from the book CSS Secrets by Leah Veru, a really, really good book. I have linked to it in the description as well. Um, I'd actually made a code pen just following along with that because I thought it was really interesting a really long time ago and completely forgot about it. And when I was sort of going through my old pens and deleting some stuff, I came across it and said, well, that'd be a really nice fallback. Um, so I tried it out and it works great. And we'll come up to my uh, main content here where I have padding of six zero. Um, we're gonna replace this six zero with a calc. And this is where it gets really interesting. So the calc is going to be 50% minus and in this case, I'm going to do 450 pixels. Uh, there's a reason I'm choosing 450 pixels, and it's because 450 times 2 is 900. So that should give us, look at that, it's working like a charm. Um, so the 50% means it's bringing the padding all the way out to the middle here, and then it's going minus 450 this way, and minus 450 that way. So it's giving us the container without the markup of the container. So really, really cool that we can do that. So uh, we can just use that same thing here. So I'll copy this on my hero um, and I can do it here on my footer too. The only reason I didn't set this up actually here to begin with was just because uh, this padding on my footer was a little bit different. Um, you could always bring this up top and then do a padding top and bottom separately. It's up to how you want to organize it. Um, but you can see it's working great. It's a nice little fallback. It's going to work fantastically. And then on browsers that do support grid, it's gonna switch over and use our grid instead. Um, you might be going, well, what's the point in even using the grid for something like this? But it's, you know, we could come in and actually make this a more complicated layout. I could put two columns across here. I could do much more complicated things and just have a simpler fallback going to something that works on older browsers. Um, so yeah, I, I thought that's a really neat, awesome trick and something that um, works really, really well. So I really hope you liked it. If you did like this, please hit the thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below if you have any other ideas on how we could use this and other cool ways that it could be used. A huge thank you to my patrons for helping support everything that I do here. I really, really appreciate it. And just a thank you to everybody just for watching this video. Again, I hope you liked it. And until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.